So hello and welcome to Catavan Cast, Van Life with a Cat. And I'm Ben. I'm Fry. And today we're talking about our experiences and sort of tips and tricks taking a camper van slash motorhome to Luxembourg. Mm-hmm. Luxembourg is a teeny tiny country. Yes. Uh, I mean, what it took us, we came in at one of the more southern points. We did, yes, from France. Yeah, and went up to Vianden. Which isn't the most northern point? No, but it's definitely a northern region in the country. Yeah. As much as they can be in a country that's only like... I don't know. I think we figured out it has that Birmingham City has a larger population than yes. the country of yeah. Luxembourg. Yes. And it took us about 45 minutes, I think, to get to... Yeah, the it wasn't itself. that much. Um, had you heard of Luxembourg before we went there? I had heard of Luxembourg. Okay. Luxembourg seems like quite politically important. They always have things. Yeah, because that's where the EU was founded, yes. formed. Yes, or something. Gathered. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Luxembourg, yeah. It's, it's nowhere, it's somewhere I didn't really have uh, any desire to go and see. No? Um, no, because I didn't know anything about it. Oh, okay. Um, I would like to go back, though, because, again, we were doing this on a budget. So we didn't. We we did indulge ourselves a little mm. in Luxembourg, uh, but we didn't do any of the museums or anything. In the I city. think I'd like to go back as well, for the same reason, but also to see uh, the country without scaffolding. Yes, uh, that's uh... <laughs> a theme for the most of for most of Europe if you're visiting outside of tourist yeah. season. But Luxembourg was particularly bad for that. Yes. Um, there were still plenty of tourists around, though, when we went. There were. There were still bus loads of people. We'll, 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 we'll yeah. swing back to that. Yeah. We'll swing back to that. Um, important things about Luxembourg, if you're planning on taking... Again, this is assuming you're taking a, a British vehicle or a non-EU vehicle, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, into... Well, I don't know, actually. No, ignore, non, not non-EU. Just, just British. EU vehicle. Um, well... Well, no, this is a British vehicle into there because you okay. need you need a GB sticker on the yeah. back of your car. Yeah. Or uh, if you have if you don't have EU number plates, so all EU vehicles will have a, a number plate with a little EU sign, and it says what country you're from. Yeah. You need that as well. Uh, God knows what happens. So we're giving all this, <laughs> we're giving all this information because by the time anyone can go there again, Britain will be officially completely out of the EU. Yeah, um, but, but those are the rules as they are. As they are, yes. The but I can imagine, as far as the number plates are concerned, um, the little EU stars at the top will just change to well, a you, Union Jack. I think we'd still need the GB sticker. I think that's all it'll be. Whatever country you're from, you'll need your little letter denomination. Yeah. They are, uh, stuck on the back of your car, just so they know where you're from. Um... You also need, as with most, you know, whenever you're driving abroad, really, you should have your insurance and your registration documents yep. and your passport. Um, Europe, they, we've mentioned in France, they have the required kit you need, which is the, the high-vis vest, the spare bulbs, all things like that. The warning triangle. The warning triangle. Um, those are all required in European countries, but not all in every country. No. So Luxembourg, you are required to have a warning triangle with you, and you are required to have a high vis vest, uh, which is only to be not as stringent as France or Spain or anywhere in Luxembourg. It's only if you have to get out of your car in an emergency on the motorway. Okay. So again, it should be to hand. Yeah. Um, because if you're walking on a motorway, you should have a high vis vest on. Yeah. Another difference, uh, as compared to France in particular, is that you don't. It's not a legal requirement for you to have breathalysers on you. Yes, yeah. But if you've bought your little EU driving kit, yeah, that will you'll, have, you'll have all of it. Just keep that with you and just keep your high vis to hand. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, in Luxembourg, you have to be 18 to drive. Oh, okay. Um, saying that, I don't know whether that's just for foreign drivers. Um, I don't. But unless you're, if you're from Luxembourg, you probably won't be listening to this for tips on how to <laughs> drive in Luxembourg. Um, but Luxembourg, we, we didn't spend long in Luxembourg because there's it's a small place. Yes. You, I mean, you, I suppose you could spend a long time there. Well, you could. There are plenty of places we You easily could. There's so yeah. much more to explore. Um, 
But we were still on a time we were We were on point, a time so. restraint. But Luxembourg is very easy to get around. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's motorways going everywhere. Yep. All the roads are in excellent condition. Yep. Uh, and there are no toll roads. No. You do not have to pay any extra for your for the privilege of driving on roads. Yeah. Uh, the fuel was, I think it was a little bit cheaper. Obviously that fluctuates and change. God knows what it's like at the moment. <laughs> um, just for um, reference say we're recording this, it's for the 10th of May? Yes, of today. May? 10th of May today. 10th of May today. Uh, we've been sat in this one place since the end of March. Obviously due to the, uh, the lockdown. Yes. In Greece. So all of this we did late last year. So uh, October last year. 2019 we were doing this yeah so petrol prices may have completely changed now but it was a little bit if not a little bit cheaper if not the same as france it, i remember it being cheaper because i specifically remember saying we should fill up here before we uh, head out of the country yeah yeah um so yes yes uh the big not the big thing but one of the things i worried about when we first got there uh, was wondering whether they, because I think there is a language, the Luxembourgish, Le- or Luxembourgish, yes. But everybody speaks French. Yeah. They say bonjour. They say au revoir. Yeah. Comment t'appelles-tu? I can't remember what that means. I just know that's French. What's your name? Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, everybody speaks French, and there you go. The petrol, at least while we were there, was a yeah. little bit cheaper than France. And they all speak English as well, so. Yes. To be fair, it's. It's a small enough country that most places count as tourist areas. Yeah. Um, so enough people speak English. Yes. Um, there, as well as no motorway tolls, there are no uh, low emission zones or congestion charge zones, even in the capital, Luxembourg City. Hmm. There are congestion problems in Luxembourg. Yes. But nothing you have to pay for other than with your time. No. If you're in a camper van slash motorhome anyway, as with most city centres, I would recommend that you do not go into the middle of Luxembourg yeah, City. Yeah, don't go to the middle of Luxembourg, or, or any capital city. Yeah. You're just asking for a rough time. Yeah. Um, but in, uh, to counteract that, I don't think this was the case when we went there, when we were there, mm-hmm. uh, but all public transport is now free. Oh, okay. And I'll check that's to everybody. Um, I remember before we went in, there was something about them trying to do that. They hadn't done it yet, but they were trying oh, to there, do it. There you go. That'll be it. Um, so, yeah... All public transport is free. That sounds absolutely brilliant. Uh, but once you watch a couple of videos or read a couple of articles about it, the locals will tell you that that doesn't solve the problem because it is incredibly unreliable. <laughs> um, like trains just don't turn up. Buses wow. just go different places. Like, it's just not worth it. Like, let's say buses have timetables, but it almost seems like a cruel joke. Um, so Excellent. yeah, all, but that's across the country. All public transport is free. Um, it may be different for, I don't know if there are any cable cars or anything like that, but services like that are usually private. Yeah. So, it's the, that the guys on their bike slash scooter thing is going on. On scoots. The scoots. <laughs> um, other things to consider, which um, we were early enough, we were far enough out of winter while we were there not to worry about it. Luxembourg does have winter tyre laws, mm-hmm. like a lot of uh, European, especially northern European countries have. Um, but it's very unclear. The only regulation is winter tyres are required in wintry conditions. Okay. Most other countries will have a date. Yes. Either a month or a specific date in a month where you must have either winter tyres or snow chains on you. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no winter tyre rules in Luxembourg. Uh, sorry, there's no snow chain rules in Luxembourg, but the winter tyre law is required in wintry conditions I see so if you're going in a wintry month and you're a bit unsure and you have the option probably better to take winter tyres yes or just avoid it altogether yes which we would have done if we were there later in the year yeah I will say though I've just uh, remembered this because I mentioned it in the YouTube video for this episode okay um that nice little plug there, thank I you. I know, yeah. I know. That's a that's, a, that's Catavan nice. on YouTube. Yeah, so this is all you can you can watch the episodes and follow us along. <laughs> um, Sorry, but Luxembourg roads. Luxembourg is a very mountainous country. Yes, it's a small country, but it's very mountainous. But rather than follow the mountains as most countries seem to, or you know, go up and down 
throughout the country. Luxembourg's decided, nope, we're just going to build flyovers everywhere. Yes. You're just going over valleys constantly. Flyovers and tunnels. Yes. Mm. Um, I think the longest tunnel we had was in Luxembourg. It was like a 13 kilometer one. Some of the, I think, if not the one, certainly yeah. one of the longest. Uh, yeah. Which is kind of cool. But, yeah. So, what wintry conditions means, I'm not entirely sure, but... On the main main roads, i.e. motorways, those... Yeah, travelling between large towns and cities, you should be fine. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll get to it, but Viandon, coming up through there, you would have yeah. needed. you would have needed that. If it was cold. Yeah. Um, I suppose it brings on to speed limits, which... The, what, the one thing Europe tends to vary on is the top end of the speed limit. Yeah. Down, it, almost everywhere, it was down there everywhere, is 50 kilometres in built-up areas. Yep. 50 kilometres an hour rather in built up areas at 90 once you're on the open roads but in Luxembourg is one of the fastest thing you can do 130 kilometres on the motorways oh, ok cool uh, obviously Germany is faster with the autobahns but yeah you know. um, however uh, which we didn't know while we were there um, so of course officially we did this uh, <laughs> if you have not had your driving licence for two years if you have been if you have had your driving licence for less than two years you are n- not allowed to go any faster than 70 kilometres an hour, which is about 50 kilometres an hour. 50 miles per hour. Miles an hour, sorry, yes. Um, so, yeah, if you've basically that put you, that excludes you from driving on motorways. Yes. Yeah. Um, again, like most European countries, built up areas are denoted by either a silhouette of a urban skyscape. Town. Yes. Does that count? Yeah. Um, or. Mm-hmm the town's name in a rectangular white yes. and black sign. Yeah. And it's uh, the end of that built-up area is denoted by a red line through... An identical sign. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it doesn't always tell you 50 kilometres. No. Or when it changes back up to 90, it will just be, if you see a, a town sign, you're in a built-up area now, it's 50. Yeah. When you see the same sign with a line through it, a big red line through it, you're good, you're 90. Off yeah. Again. Uh, also, buses always have right of way when pulling out. Yes. I suppose that's in a, an attempt to get the public transport worth using, uh, <laughs> even if it is free. Um, but yeah, for buses pulling out of a bus stop, uh, especially school buses, they have right of way. Let them out. Um, also, because they do have, there are some uphill bits. There will be on um, the town. Ta- yeah. Like once you're seat. off the motorway, yes. there will be. I don't uh, know. And in that ends on steep uphill sections. Uh, uphill traffic has the right of way mm. in the rare. I mean, we never, we did some back roads and we never had to, we never encountered a time where anyone would need to give way to anybody else. No. Um, on roads. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and generally, in specifically for motorhomes and camper vans, the country is uh, rather accepting and accommodating to camper vans, motorhomes. Yeah. Um, just how we didn't use any. Uh, of the dedicated areas, but just having a quick look on the Park for Night app, there are lots of areas. Well, say lots, but it's a small country. Yeah. There doesn't need to be a lot. Um, but there are a couple of purely uh, water emptying and filling points. And okay. there are a few, uh, like across Europe, little car parks, whether it's a, a leisure centre or by a stadium or something. Yeah. Specifically for motorhomes and camper vans with water services available uh, for free. Um, although some do charge like a euro for an amount of time for water, yeah. say things like that, but you know, it's there for your convenience. Um, and again, they will remain there as long as people don't abuse the facilities, yeah, or abuse the fact you know, if people start parking up there and camping outside, setting up their tables and chairs, and that it'll soon stop. Uh, again, we didn't use any of those, no. Um, we'll come on to well, so that's a good segue into our little. Anecdotal story of Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Um, well, we set off from Reims, didn't we? In yes. France. Yes. Um, made sure we were all full in the van with water and drinking water and everything like yeah. that. Well, we had all the we had the water points and such in Reims. In Reims, we? yeah. Yeah. Um, made our way through the north of France, through Verdun and all yep. of that, and got to the border. Great big fly in here. We're trying to record. Because Dargo's lounging outside, she's not going to come and eat it. But <laughs> that's, that's, that's not an audio problem. That's a, 
a fly. There's a fly. That's what we'll say even if there was an audio problem. Exactly. Um, yes, so we got to the border town of Esh sur Alzette. I'm sure that's exactly how it's pronounced. Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure Alzette is a river. Okay. Um, oh, the Esh on... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah possibly. Um, which is just a small town. Literally a small town on the French Luxembourg border. Yeah. Um, and... Well, that's we, notable, really, because that was our first um, inter-European border. Border, crossing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we crossed the border from England to France, but that's a ferry, so that's quite yeah. an event. Yeah. And this is both of our. Is that right? Both of our first time. Yes. Driving across yes. any EU border. It's very non-eventful. It is. We didn't know what to expect, did we? No, we were kind we had of no trying idea. to keep an eye out for it. It was raining as well. And it was night time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we were just like, oh. Okay, we're here. Uh, there was a little sign, a little square well, sign. The, the general standard is you, you get a little EU standard sign. It says, you know, just the EU circle with the name of the country that you're now in. And then past that, there'll be a big sign that goes over the speed limits again. Yes. Um, which we've already told you, so you don't need it. Yes. Uh, but if you need a reminder, yeah, that's always there. There, are, there have been a couple of exceptions, I think. A couple of... Off the top of my head, I can't think where, but I'm sure we've crossed some borders and there's, on main roads and there's been no uh, speed No speed limits. Sorry. Yeah, there, yeah there's we've been had that. the country signs, but not the, the yeah. speed limit. I don't think Italy had one the way we came in. Yeah, yeah. that was on a little diddy road. Yeah, exactly. the point, there, was, there wasn't room, because where you'd put the sign was the Mediterranean. This is true. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we stayed in this town and there was... I mean, it was a very slopey stop. It was incredibly slopey that day. So was the it? following night, actually, but just a car park that runs. It's just a road with parking spaces all along the side of the road going mm. up a hill, um, and it's in amongst a lot of uh, parks and nature yes. areas. Um, and again, you know, as long as it's the, I'll, I'll keep saying it just to reiterate it, just to hopefully put people off from ruining it for everybody else. But as long as you're parked and you're quiet and you're not making mess. Yeah. You're fine parking in most of these places. That said, we are in a a camper van, a converted van, so we're less obvious than a motorhome. We were at the time. I think we're more obvious now. Oh, yeah, we have had a bit of a colour palette swap. <laughs> <laughs> but I think even then, it's Europe. Like, people motorhome across, because it's so easy to visit different countries. Yeah. Um, Europe, on the whole, is very accommodating to motorhomes. Mm. Some more than others. Um, and again, that is, you can use... There, there were. I think this car park uh, was paid up to a point because of the bottom. It was on a hill. Yeah. And the bottom of the hill was next to a like a youth centre. Mm. So I think some of them were paid between certain hours, like in the middle of the day yeah. or something. But in the evening and overnight, it was free. Yeah. Um, I think so. And it was on a quiet road, so that was you know we we weren't bothered. No. Um, and then we went to Viandon. Yes. Which you actually have to go around Luxembourg City to get to. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose you do to most places in Luxembourg, it's that small. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I think 45 minutes is a bit of a, an understatement as to how small the country is. It yeah. It's a bit longer than that, but it's a short morning to it get was. there. And it's such a pleasant drive as well, from what I remember. Yes. Uh, like you say, it's all... I mean, the tunnels are a bit boring. Yeah. But they're... they're <laughs> as boring as it sounds, they're nice tunnels. They are nice tunnels. Um, We've had some horrible tunnels where we expected better ones. But when we, but... <laughs> you get on the toll roads in Italy, you think, oh, these are the paid roads. These must be well maintained. And the tunnels look like they've been there since Dinger before games. World War Two. Oh. <laughs> um, Which they probably have. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> but they weren't toll roads then. So. Yeah. Well, I anyway, um, yes, yeah, lots of overpasses. You sometimes feel like you could be in Switzerland almost. Yeah. Um, or at least... Well, you're um, close enough. Area. Really close enough. Well, really? Kind of. Maybe. It's very hilly. It's very scenic. Yeah. Uh, every overpass and coming out of every tunnel is just wondering what you're going to see next. Um, but yes, um, after the motorway, I believe we went through some little towns next to a river before we got to Viandon itself. Okay. Um, and when you get to Viandon the way we went, you come in at the top. Yes, which is probably the best way to yes. do so. Yes. Because you can see it from quite... Because Viandon... Well, 
how would you describe the Andon? It's a fairy tale town. It really is. You've got this like fairy tale castle at the top yep. with the pointy turrets. Yes. And you know the grey slate roofs and things like that, and then which is just on a hill. Um, Surrounded by forested mountains. Yep, and then at the bottom of the hill, quite a sharp like cliff. Mm. There's just this little tight streets cobblestone road town, yeah. Yeah. leading down to a river. So it is just a. It's it's basically the town bells kicking around in the start of Beauty and the Beast, isn't it? Yeah. Or, or any it is. any Disney princess village. Yes. Um, is what that place. Maybe is. not quite Jasmine though. No, not Jasmine. No, it's not as much. <laughs> Um, but but yes. no, uh, but we managed to park. Well, we ended up trying to find parking in the Andon, mm. in the village itself, which I'm glad we did because we didn't find parking there. There's, it's quite because it's it's the ancient roads. Yeah, it's too small for a vehicle of this size. Yeah, um, but we did get to drive through it, and it's like you say, it's it's a fairy tale. Which yeah. a fairy tale cobblestone street is actually a nightmare for uh, old. Van suspension. Yes. Um, and then we had to go back up the hill as well. Exactly. Uh, the tank full of water and everything else. Mm. Um, but on on the roads, because the road sort of comes in, you're above the village. Yeah. But it sort of borders the village, if you like. If you know, so yeah. you come at it from the south, I think, and the village, and you sort of come around it, and you can you park, but you're looking down. Yeah. A sheer cliff onto the village. Yeah. Um, and there's parking. It's just one of these. Just all along the side of the road, wasn't it? Mm. Just one big parking space, just make room in there. Yep. Some, I think a couple of coaches were parked up there, a lot of vans, cars, and it's free. Yeah. And it's about it's like a five minute walk to the castle, or yeah. palace. It we'll, wasn't we'll even that bad. Um, but I would recommend parking where we did, and then walking down, because as you say, especially during high tourist season, yeah. That's going to be such a busy road. Yes. And so. trying to turn around somewhere and come back up that road. It was bad enough for us. Exactly. Um, um, when we went, everything was basically closed as well in the town, wasn't it? Um, a lot of stuff was closed, but also stuff was quite expensive. Yes. It's very much a tourist trap yeah. area. Yeah. Uh, definitely it's worth a visit to, though. Yes, but um, but again, you park on the road; it's free. Exactly, and exactly. You're there, um, um, and as you're walking down towards the town and then up to the castle, there are little plaques of information, if you remember. Yeah. Because that road is actually for part of it alongside the old town wall. Oh, yes. And you've yes. still got the towers. Yes, you can see them in people's gardens, can't you? Yeah, you've still yeah. got the towers. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. But, yeah, so you, then you walk down into the town just a little bit before hanging a left and following the signs for the castle. Yes, the um, castle's um, not very easy to miss. <laughs> um, I say it dominates the skyline as you come in. Yeah. Um, and you just walk up, so again, some steep hills. And we did treat ourselves. We haven't done many museums on this trip, mm. but every so often we, you have to treat yourself. I don't think Viandon was that expensive either. I think it was like six euros each. I had a feeling it was closer to twelve euros each. Really? Yeah. I might look that up. Fly? Is that the same fly or a bigger fly? Go away. I think it's a bigger fly. Ugh. It's a, the whole world's out there, and you're coming here. Go to Luxembourg. Um, it's nice. <laughs> um. I'm just going to quickly... Okay. Well, I'll just talk. The, the oh, castle, God. it's had a tumultuous life. Like, it was it was built over the years. And you go in and it's, a, it's now a museum. Um, but it's been rebuilt to look as much as the original building would have done when it was built. Yeah. So it's not built to be used as a functioning palace or... What was the argument, whether it's a palace or a castle? Yes, so the some of the locals say it's a palace. Other locals say it's a castle. And it's even, it's called Viandon Castle as well. But The argument's about walls, isn't it? Also? I think because it looks yes, it, like a palace. It's got more of a palace look to it. 
Well, it could go either way, I suppose, couldn't it? I'm not so sure, because in my head, a castle has fortifications, and Vianden Castle has fortifications. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, the building itself looks yeah. like it's quite a palace-looking castle. Yeah. But it has walls. It has defences. Mm. So it's a castle. Yeah. Um, but that's, even to this day, people are still arguing about whether it's a castle or a palace. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But no, that was really good. You get to go in, you see the history of it. So a lot of it was torn down uh, or fallen into disrepair. Um, some people argued it should have been left in disrepair because that gives it its own sort of mystique and vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, there was also a, a VR experience in there, uh, which I don't think it was working at the time. It was in one of the top rooms. You could put it on put the VI headset on and it would show you what it was what that room was like because that room was more of an exhibition yeah because it had a lot of photos of uh, Luxembourg royal family oh turning yes up. Uh, all, the all the famous people that have come to visit the castle because it only reopened in the 50s I think wasn't it I think so something like that um, but no that, that was our little treat to ourselves you know it's not every day you get to go to a almost a genuine Disney castle um so we left there and we headed to a, another nearby town called, well, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, La Rochette. Uh, just outside of which was a little chateau or fort. I mean, the, the full name of the place is Chateau Fort La Rochette. Oh, okay. Uh, so I don't know whether it's a castle or a fort. or House fort. What well, house fort. <laughs> um, but unfortunately that was closed, that was closed for the season. Um but we got there in the dead of night, and it was another slope night. But there, again, as long as people are respectful of the space, there are bins available. Um, you can park a, outside. If I remember correctly, that was a stop where there was a lot of activity that night. There were people coming in and out of the Chateau Fort. Yeah. Um, yeah and we didn't someone, understand why. Cause we, well, there were, it was almost as if someone was, cause someone was taking in shopping bags or something. Yeah. So maybe people lived there. Well, people live at Manabir Castle in Wales, don't they? Yeah, Was true. That? So maybe people live there just to look after it um, in the off-season. Uh, but we saw reviews for it, and we know that the people there are happy enough for campers to yes. park up outside and spend the night. Again, as long as you're quiet, as long as you don't leave a mess, there are bins left. The one thing we did learn there, though, is that if we'd have backed up too far into that parking space, oh yeah, we'd have gone over a sheer cliff. And that's quite characteristic of Luxembourg. Sheer cliffs. Um, <laughs> yes. But the roads never seem that hard. It's interesting when you go down some motorways in Spain and the van started struggling because they're mm. so steep. But we never struggled in Luxembourg. So you no. do end up with some altitude. But it never it sort of catches you off guard. Um, driving at night didn't help us miss that either. Um... But looking now, and not annoyingly, because we were fine, but there were spaces between there and Luxembourg City, which are dedicated motorhome spaces with the services and such. Um, no joy, is that? I found it. Uh, 2020 prices are €8 Euros for adults. Oh, OK. So. I had it way off then. Well, it's definitely worth €8. Euros exactly. Euros. That's why yeah. I think it was €6 Euros when we went. Okay. Um, it is, of course, currently closed until further notice. Of course. But <laughs> what with everything going on, yes, you know, this is really the wrong time to launch the uh, travel-based blog, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no one can go anywhere, and the rules will probably change. It's fine. People can live vicariously through us. It's fine. Um, yeah. So then we went to Luxembourg City. Yes. The capital, which, which is quite enchanting in itself, minus the construction. Well, so we'll get to that the thing. It's uh, definitely worth going to. Yes, certainly, hundred uh, percent. And again, there are no uh, emission zones or congestion charge zones, mm -hmm. so you can, if you want to, drive your big fume spewing monstrosity into the middle of the city. You won't be able to though, because of physically because of the congestion, it'll yeah. take you too long. We found a place. It was on park for night. Uh, it didn't have very good reviews. I think mainly because. It would not be ideal to spend the night. It, no, it's not a place that you want to stop. But, but for parking during the day so you can go and explore the city, it was perfect. Yeah, it was uh, it's about a 25-ish minute walk from the centre. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's, okay. reading the, that's me checking the park for night description earlier. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it, it was the best part of half an hour, if not half an hour. It was 
longer than you. But then this, that's just to get to the centre. There's parks and things. Yeah, exactly. On your There's way on to the, the centre. Um, but it's in a. It wasn't a bus station, but coaches used it to park up. Yeah. For their breaks and such. It's just west of the the main train station, uh, according to the map I looked at this morning. Mm-hmm. And say so it's free. There are a couple of spaces up against the wall which are free for. Well, sorry, dedicated for uh, motorhomes and camper vans. Cars use it. Coaches use it. There's. There were about three or four coaches parked up there looking directly at us when we parked up and they had guys in them on their break. Yeah. And it's right next to a main road. So it's not the most pleasant of places, but there's constantly people there. Yeah. Um, so there's enough eyes on it to deter people trying to yeah. break into your van. But we'd seen no reports of people being broken into anywhere. No. It's just you wouldn't want to spend the night there. Because no. you're right next to a main road, which there isn't a ring road around Luxembourg as such. But if there was but one, if, it'd if be there that. was, this would be part of it, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, then we got to Luxembourg. We took the cat, didn't we? We did take the cat. Yes. Um, we hadn't really taken her out since Paris, I don't think. But no, we let her out for little, nice. little walks. Yeah, we got. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she enjoyed it. There was even a lady who commented. She's just like. <gasps> You've got a cat. I was like, "Yes, I do." <laughs> yes, and then I think there was the, we were taking photos of a church and a load of students. Noticed, yes, yeah, and trying to take sneaky pictures. Um, and I was like, "I'll just stand perfectly still, pretending not to have heard <laughs> you. It's fine." <laughs> um, we well, we let out let her out for a walk in the parks on the way back. We did. Um, she liked that. She was very much not used to that. No, at that point, no, no. so she gets. I think now she's more like, okay, we're going for a walk. Whereas then she's like, I need to explore everywhere. And so it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass for us. But yeah. Well, it's not It's not so much that. It's Walking a cat is very different to walking a dog. When yeah. you're walking a dog, the dog will follow you. When you're yeah. walking a cat, you have to let the cat lead. Generally, yes. Um, and just kind of... You have to let them lead, but also just protect them from any dangers. And that's your job. You're not leading yeah. them. You just... Yeah. Protecting them. Um, and I remember there was an old chap walking towards us in that park. And he mm. at first thought it was a dog. But when he got close enough, he just kind of stopped. And he was like, okay. And just carried on going. <laughs> um, flies back. Oh, the flies back. Good. Dog is too busy sunning outside to come and defend us from these vermin. Um, it's gone for now. He'll be back. Uh yeah, of course, the other thing with Luxembourg was really where it hit home that Europe is under construction in the winter. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, yeah. everywhere we turned, there was roadworks going on. I think quite a big chunk of Luxembourg was closed because of roadworks itself. Mm. Um, Luxembourg City, this is. Yes. Um, and then one of the main squares had scaffolding everywhere. Yep. Um there were it, some alleyways which were just blocked off. Oh, yes. Yeah, there were road closures and stuff like that as well. Um, which, again, the very centre of Luxembourg City, it's... I'm pretty sure it's all a pedestrian zone. Most, uh, A lot of it was, yes. Yes, yes. or by, like, authorised vehicles only kind of a situation. Yes. Um, but still, it just... Even some of those were closed, though. No, yeah. you can't come down here. Exactly. You've got to go around. Yeah. But from what we saw of it, it was pretty. Um, yeah. The The thing is, with travelling with a cat, and obviously bringing the cat with you, is that that stops you going into a lot of places. It does. Um, we've... not there's, um, Most restaurants and things... Well, not restaurants, but like, you know, McDonald's don't care. Just keep her in the bag <laughs> and sit her quietly. Yeah. Um... But you're, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to get into museums. Yeah, That's museums such. is... There are exceptions, but tough. we'll get to that. Um, but we knew we... Because we'd gone to Vianden Castle, we knew we weren't going into any museums in Luxembourg. No. Luxembourg Cathedral was also a strange one. We couldn't quite figure out where the front end of it was. Do you remember? Yeah, nothing... You, you, Yes, it didn't have... Because most cathedrals have a big square in front of them, don't they? Yeah. Luxembourg didn't. This just seemed to be a facade attached to the side of a few buildings. Yeah. It, yeah, it was just like tower block, tower block, cathedral, tower block, tower block yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, but the front end of it looked like the back end of 
usual cathedrals. Yeah. That's why we kept going round mm. to see if we could find the front end Try of it. Front, but yeah. that was the front end. We're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But we by no means explored the whole of no, not Luxembourg too. because then we re- we got to one sort of overlook, which... Yes. Do you remember? Yeah. And it, it sort of... Because Luxembourg, I think it's built... Luxembourg City, rather, is on, on top of several yeah. of plateaus. And there are um, overpasses to take it between them. Yeah. And when we sort of realised that, we're like, oh, well, we can't... We're not going to do this all today. No. Um, and we never did. We, we, we only spent the one day there. Because we're not going to any museums. Mm. Um, purely because that's... That's the budget we're on. Yeah. We we chose to allow ourselves to be out here longer, but learn less, I suppose. Yeah. Um, or just do less paid things. Yeah. Um, but you can still, you know, you can still go and see a lot. We went to the the palace. Indeed. The Park, which again is, you know, growing unassuming. Well, growing up in the UK in yeah. England, like you see a, like a palace. A real life palace is Buckingham Palace, and that's got a huge. It's set back from everything. There's a massive park in front of it. There's huge gates. The guards are now there behind the gates, uh, and all this. And but then in Luxembourg, it's just on a. I mean, there were bigger squares, just with McDonald's on them, and this one just fair enough. There was no McDonald's on it, but it was quite a small square on a bit of a slope, and I think we only knew it was the palace because there were royal guards outside. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I will add just as a almost final note um, about Luxembourg City, the architecture is amazing. Mm. Like even when we were stood looking across the bridge to the other side of the city. Yes. Um. The buildings there, because I know one of them was like a massive museum. Mm. The architecture is just fantastic. It's yeah. just amazing. Is that a meep? I think that was a meep. Okay. I'll go. It's okay. Dargo needs rescuing. Okay. You see, one of the adaptions we've made for the cat is we've uh, given her quite a long lead so we can park up and let her out. Because she doesn't realise that she has to come back on herself with the lead because she'll walk around things and get stuck. Um, Most commonly, the front tyres of the van. Where is she? Where is she? I'm not sure. Oh. Even better. Luckily now she's learned to mew. Um, that's a good sound. Okay, Freya's found the cat. Uh, but no, Luxembourg. There's clearly a lot of history in Luxembourg. And unfortunately, I don't think either of us realised quite how much there was there before we went. Um, it's only since leaving... And looking up there, oh, well, what was this building? What was that building? Then you Google it later on. That we've realised how much has happened there. And how much there would be to learn from the many, many museums that we walked past and just kind of ignored. Because we're on a budget. Um, Oh, she's back. Where was she? She'd got herself trapped twice around the front driver's side wheel. That's the second time she's done that. (laughs) Absolute menace. And all you hear is meepses. Yeah. When all she'd have to do is walk around. <laughs> Maybe one day. No, she won't learn. That's a I lot. think it's because she gets it stuck a little bit. And then she's like, oh, can't go this way. Must go the other way. No, maybe. Who knows. Um, but yes, Luxembourg. Just saying, I think there's a lot more history to it than either of us thought there was. So we'd have to go back. Maybe you do. Oh, maybe me. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> See, I had a lot more geographical and historical knowledge before coming on this trip than you did, dear. That's it. Well, yeah, I hadn't heard of Andorra before this trip. Or San Marino. Well, I didn't hear about San Marino until like the week before we went. Um, <laughs> no, Luxembourg, I'd, I'd like to one day go back to Luxembourg. It's not top of my list or anything, but I'd certainly appreciate going back there yeah. to do some of the museums. Yeah. To learn more about it. Yeah, um, me too. Me and too. then from there, because it's... Such a short country. I hear jokes, especially recently. Uh, it's quite an odd concept for people who live in larger countries or more isolated countries like the UK or, say, America or somewhere yeah. like that, where Luxembourg is one of those countries where you can be like, oh, I'll just, on my way to Germany 
from France, I'll just pop into Luxembourg, do some shopping and then come out. <laughs> you know, I'll just pop in to get something to eat. Um, because we went from Luxembourg City into Belgium Yeah. that day. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember where in Belgium we stopped. I remembered. I remembered where, just as we started recording. Oh, it was the go. behind the sports centre. Oh, yes. That was our first stop in Belgium. Yes. Yeah. We had our first shower. We did, yes. Oh, my word. Uh, but that's for next time. It is. Um, yeah, that's about everything for Luxembourg. So, it's great. Generally, like, it's great that you, you don't have to worry about driving anywhere. Yeah. Because there are no fees that are going to jump on you mm. or surprise you several months down the line. Um, yes. We actually got some, didn't we? We got them from Norway. Yeah, Norway's road tolls. Norway and Sweden, they don't... Um... It, Norway's quite confusing. We'll, well, yeah. we'll, we'll get onto it. We were in Norway in October. Yeah. And we've only just be, we've only just had them sent back home. Fine, sent back home. It's not a fine. That's the thing. Well, again, we'll get onto that. Yeah. Well, I don't want to spend time on that. Um, but there's none of that to worry about in Luxembourg. The roads are all in excellent conditions. Yeah. If you can, if you've got time to kill to try and wait for public transport, it's free. So what it'll cost you is time. Um, I really don't think you need it. No, um, not at all. So there's plenty of places that are very accommodating of motorhomes and camper vans. I say we went in say October, early October, mm. and it was a bit grey. But it's still it's one of those places. I think any weather gives the the scenery its own sort of feel. Yeah. Well, it'd be nice to see it in bright sunshine. We should did have some bright sunshine. But it also gives it its own feel if it was snowing or if it was raining or yeah. foggy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, hopefully that's given you some insights if you were planning on going to Luxembourg. Um, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and on YouTube. Yep. Anything else? No, if anybody has any questions, just let us know. Um, Facebook and Instagram... I manage so I can quite happily answer any questions whatsoever. As we said, there are YouTube videos for this. Yes. Um, so have a look on there if you don't believe us. <laughs> um, there, there are our early videos though. I've been watching the back. Yeah, recently. they're not fantastic. I'm, are they? I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of them. No. Um, I had a gyroscopic, gyroscopic, like one yes. of those steady mounts for the camera, and you have to use the thumbstick to move it, and I'm. I was terrible at it. Um, and I never got a chance to get better at it because it got stolen. Yes. That's for another time. Fantastic. Yes. So yeah, check us out on YouTube. Follow us on the social medias to tell us what inf- all the glaring nuggets of information we missed out on this podcast. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Indeed. Um, stay indoors. <laughs> Drink water. Drink water. <laughs> Don't touch the walls. Um... Hopefully we we can all get back to travelling again like we all used to. And one day. We'll see you next time. Maybe.